Hi, Ice Cube. My name is River Wright, and I just wanted to come out and say thank you for reaching out to both parties, actually, and for putting the time and effort into your contract with Black America. Yeah, you've been saying a lot of things that make a lot of sense. And as of late, you sound a lot like Malcolm X. Uh, Democratic National Party held a convention. A lot of people, you know what I mean, getting up there and talking and, you know, everybody really, you know, eating it up, you know, throwing their hands in the air like they just don't care down there. So it's, it's uh, you know, what I didn't hear is what's in it for us? What's in it for the black community besides the same old thing we've been getting? from these uh, parties. 22 million black victims of Americanism are waking up and they're gaining a new political consciousness, becoming politically mature. And as they become, uh, develop this political maturity, they're able to see the recent trends in these uh, political elections. They see that the whites are so evenly divided that every time they vote, uh, the race is so close, they have to go back and count the votes all over again. And that, that, which means that any block, any minority that has a block of votes that stick together is in a strategic position. Either way you go, that's who gets it. You're, you're in a position to determine who goes to the White House and who stay in the doghouse. You're the one who has that power. They don't have a plan. Everybody's, you know talking about get Trump out, get Trump out, get Trump out. If you vote, that, that's going to happen in, on the first day. So now what? Trump out, now what? What? What do we get in the first hundred days? The whites were evenly divided. It was the fact that you threw 80% of your votes behind the Democrats that put the Democrats in the White House. When you see this, you can see that the Negro vote is the key factor. And despite the fact that you are in a position to, de to be the determining factor, what do you get out of it? Make them earn that vote. They can start today. They ain't got it yet. They can start today. Make their ass earn that vote, man. Stop playing with these people and they'll stop playing with you. The Democrats have been in Washington, D.C. only because of the Negro vote. They've been down there four years. And they're all other legislation they wanted to bring up, they brought it up and gotten it out of the way, and now they bring up you. And now they bring up you. You put them first, and they put you last. Because you're a chump. A political chump. I think you are absolutely correct to demand something for the black vote. I think it's something that black people have ignored for a while and we've allowed ourselves to be taken advantage of and we most definitely have been taken advantage of. I, and I think it's horrible and it's shocking and it is disgraceful that there are people out there that are coming after you and you know we live in this can crazy cancel culture age where to them it makes sense to defame you <laughs> because you're trying to help the black community. It makes, it makes no sense. And I think it also speaks volumes that when you went to go meet, when you reached out, only President Trump immediately reached back. Not only did he reach back, but he had the platinum plan, you know, which is a plan for black people. And he included some of your uh, contract with Black America stuff into that plan, and he's offering five hundred billion dollars. Five hundred billion dollars, you know, for Black people specifically. But yet the other side said, you know what? Uh, we're not going to talk with you. Well, we'll wait till after the election. I mean, when you reach out, <laughs> and only one side reaches back. You know, how do you not work with that side? See, I think that one of the things that we have to keep in mind here and, you know, why I believe that 
you couldn't get uh, Biden to reach back is because he's a large part of the problem. He's the one that came up with the 100 to 1 cocaine to crack ratio, where, you know, if you were caught with 100 grams of cocaine, that gave you the same sentence as, you know, getting caught with one gram of crack. It was Joe Biden that largely authored the 94 Clinton crime bill, which is directly responsible for the mass incarceration of black men. It was Joe Biden that his own running mate, Kamala Harris pointed out, who fought against integration. It was Joe Biden that has been quoted as saying that he didn't want his kids to grow up in a quote, racial jungle, unquote, which means black people. He didn't want his kids growing up around black people. So no, when you go there and you say, hey, um, I'd like to do something for black people. And then they say, ah, uh, yeah, no, now nah, we'll, we'll talk to you later. But, uh, <laughs> but if you, but if you don't vote for us, you ain't black. Mm -mm, nope. I'm not surprised in one bit. See black people, we talk a lot about institutionalized racism. The thing that we just haven't seemed to be able to understand on a massive level is that that institution is a series of policies, okay? Like we are a nation of laws and you have to be able to go through and call out those bad policies wherever you find them, you know, for whoever, it, it doesn't matter what side is responsible for them. You have to call them out. It's just when I do my research, what I find is, is that the vast majority of these policies are coming to you from the Democrat side. And it shouldn't be surprising because they're the party of slavery. They're the party of Jim Crow. They're the party of segregation. They're the party of the KKK. Famously racist Democrat president LBJ's great society programs, some of which started under JFK, mark the end of the strong black family in America. The racist policies of the Democrats, Jim Crow South, in conjunction with bigoted attitudes and limited opportunities for education, made it very difficult for blacks to find jobs, and the ones that we did get were often low-paying, which left the masses in dire financial straits. Democrat President FDR had created redlining in the 1930s, which not only prevented many African Americans from being able to purchase homes in the economically depressed areas in which they lived, but it also banned lending to African Americans in nice suburban, all white neighbor neighborhoods as well. <clears throat> LBJ offered a solution, government housing and handouts in exchange for the eradication of fathers from the home. Being torn apart pained loving families, but the men didn't want to see their children starve, so they stepped aside and the government sent workers into people's homes to look in closets and under beds. And if they found a man or even just men's clothing, they took away their benefits. Well, here we are. We're about 50 years into the latest Democrat plan to destroy the black family, and that plan has been wildly successful. We went from 25% of kids being born out of wedlock in the mid-1960s to over 77% today. Without fathers to guide them, scores of children turned to gangs and drugs for the support, validation, and protection that should have been afforded to them by the nuclear family. These poor people that had been intentionally set up to fail then fell prey to the 1994 Clinton crime bill, which was largely authored by then chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee, Joe Biden, in 2001 when Clinton left office. The United States had the highest rate of incarceration in the world, according to Human Rights Watch, in seven states, African Americans were 80 to 90% of all offenders in prison, despite the fact that they were no more likely than whites to sell or use illegal drugs. I have a six part plan that I believe that if I was able to 
incorporate it with the contract with Black America would absolutely redo and revamp and address the issues of the Black community. We could help so many people. Like, I'm reaching out to you. I hope that you'll, you will reach back to me. But let me tell you about this this six part plan. I'm going to go over it real quick and I'm going to put a link up here so that you can see, you know, it's, it's more in depth than this. So I, I can go into it more in depth in the, in the link, but all right, six part plan. Number one, we have to remove the financial restrictions and get these fathers back in these homes for people who are collecting government checks. We have to be able to put fathers back and to promote marriage. Number two, I have a plan to get families working again. Number three, school choice. It's so important. We have to have a pathway. We have to have a way for people to be able to get their kids out of failing schools. We have to promote that on a nationwide level. Number four, we have to allow people to save money when they're on welfare so that they could do something like get a car and work in an area, you know, that where they could maybe make more money or things like, you know, saving up so that they could buy a home so they don't have to worry about their kid getting hit with a stray bullet in the middle of the night while they're asleep in their beds. And then I have ideas on both police and prison reform, ideas that I haven't heard anywhere else. But of all these, the most important one, of course, is the fathers. We have to get our black fathers back into these homes. And Obama knew this. Never forget, it was Obama that said that children from fatherless homes are five times more likely to live in poverty and commit crimes. It was Obama that said that fatherless children were nine times more likely to drop out of school. It was Obama that said that children from fatherless homes are 20 times more likely to go to prison. More important ingredient for success. Nothing that would be more important for us reducing violence than strong, stable families. We should encourage marriage by removing the financial disincentives for couples who love one another, uh, but may find it financially disadvantageous if they get married. You see, Obama said hope and change, but he gave us nope and the same because he was part of this institution. All I want is a chance. I'm reaching out, reach back. I'm telling you now, I have researched my solutions. They are good. They are, all of them are good. They will work. But I'm just a small person with a small voice and you're a big person with a huge voice. And just like you, I'm willing to even though I, I don't believe it would get anywhere, but I'm willing to reach across the aisle because at the end of the day, what's most important is that we help people. People have been hurt. People have been set up to fail and we need to undo these bad policies because right now it's not about what people say. It's about what they do. You can't go out and be a Democrat and say, oh, I'm for black people. But then your policies are what are destroying us. You know, it's my mom that uh, would always say that love is a behavior. And I'll tell you what, they're not behaving like they love us. They are behaving like they hate us. And if there is a side, you know, that is, is there and they're, they want to help and they're willing to help, then I say, you know, go for it full steam ahead. Because I remember when President Trump went to Chicago back in 2019 and he wanted to address the violence. 
and, and just the horrible state of things that were going on in Chicago. And when he showed up, the leadership there, the people at the top, they refused to meet with him. They refused to meet with him and they called him a racist. And what was our flip side? Our flip side was what, Obama? A guy who's from Chicago and when he got in office, he acted like he couldn't even find Chicago on a map? No, no. This is, uh, we deserve more. And I know that together with you, we could provide the hope and change that Obama promised but never delivered on. Anytime you throw your weight behind a political party that controls two thirds of the government and that party can't keep the promise that it made to you during election time and you are dumb enough to walk around continuing to identify yourself with that party, you're not only a chump but you're a traitor to your race. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and please share it. You can help us continue to fight in the war against disinformation by donating at paypal.me slash right left of center and at subscribestar.com backslash right left of center. I'm right from right left of center, and if you're watching, you're probably right too.